Welcome to today's topic, Bosch and VDS, a duo's guide to EN54 regulations and NFPA 72 standards. We would like to deep dive into the topic of standards, certifications and market dynamics in the fire alarm and detection business and how to apply them in the planning as well as the installation of fire alarm systems. Meet Dr. Florian Schaar. Coordinator Customer Relations at VDS, Europe's top approval institute for fire protection. Welcome, Florian. Thank you. And meet Onur Sunmes, Head of Sales and Marketing at Bosch for the Turkey and Middle East markets. Welcome, Onur. Thank you. Florian, there is always some confusion about the construction product regulation applied in the EU and the building codes in the US. Could you please elaborate how they are linked? Sure. Um, the construction product regulation, CPR, that can be seen as a product passport, which enables the products to move totally freely within all the European Union markets, basing on harmonized product standards, which have certain requirements for the products. Some of these requirements are related to conditions and regulations within the EU countries. And there's the building code of practice, the NFPA 72. This is a planning and installation code. It is for products which are primarily produced by the Americans for the USA. However, NFPA 72 specifies some product requirements that are related to conditions found in the USA. Intent in both cases is the same, but the method of testing and the parameters may be different. For example, um, when you look at smoke detectors, the testing temperatures specified in the NFPA are 0 to 49 degrees, while the European norms demand a little more, minus 10 to 55 degrees. But for control and indicating equipment, usually placed in other locations, it is minus 5 to 40 degrees. Interesting. According to US building codes, it's mandatory to be UL listed. What does NFPA 72 say about this? No, clearly it is not mandatory to use UL listed products to install products designed in accordance with NFPA 72. In fact, the NFPA 72 code clause 1.5 explicitly permits the use of equipment of the same or higher quality than described in this code. So it is undisputed that the EN54 standards harmonized under the CPR are on a top high level of quality and fit for use in the anticipated environment, independent from any single code of practice and including NFPA 72. Thank you, Florian. Unfortunately, there is a misconception in some markets that a tender, which is NFPA 72 specified, cannot be covered with EAN certified systems. Well, we have just from VDS that EAN solution will perfectly fulfill the requirements of NFPA 72. Thank you, Onur. Florian, can you explain the key differences between EN54 and UL certifications? Yeah, um, the intent, the target of both standards, UL and EN, is similar. In other words, each product is tested for functionality, sensitivity, it undergoes environmental testing, electromagnetic compatibility testing and fire tests. However, the actual tests and the requirements are different. The UL standards are of course written by US experts, whereas EN is written by most European countries. So the development and harmonization needs of these standards takes longer but they are scrutinized much more by those experts. The repeatability of tests and control of test equipment must be of a really high standard. So to obtain the CE mark under the CPR, the product must also meet all relevant directives such as um, EMC, electrical safety, etc. I see. Has any independent body tested the compatibility of EN certified products in NFPA installations? And does VDS comply with the NFPA requirements? Yeah, sure. Many experts have studied the NFPA 72 code. And this is why VDS and a lot of other laboratories state with confidence that the EN 
54 product approval can be allowed to be used in any installations based on NFPA 72. Addition to these topics, Bosch products are also VDA certified. So our customers can be confident that with our portfolio, they can perfectly comply with all NFPA 72 requirements. In fact, we successfully conducted several projects that were originally specified for NFPA 72. Now I recall an example, a well-known textile and apparel manufacturer operating in Lahore, Pakistan that we conclude recently. Thank you, Ono, for that example. Florian, is there any cooperation between VDS and other laboratories in Europe? Um, yeah, there is the European Fire and Security Group, the EFSG, where we have cooperation with all the top laboratories in Europe. Any testing house can apply to join the EFSG, but they must meet the high standards imposed by this group. An UL and VDS mutual data acceptance agreement was announced about a month ago. What will change with this agreement? Um, in a similar way to the EFSG agreements, this agreement is based on mutual acceptance of tests and it will be project-based and assessed case by case. The implication here is that a manufacturer wishing to gain VDS and also UL quality marks based on EN54 standards can now achieve this with a lot less testing. I see. In the past, it was also announced a similar agreement with FM Global. Could you comment on this collaboration? Um, it's basically the same as EFSG and UL, nice for our customers. These agreements are driven by the industries, by the manufacturers' needs. And as such, if the demand is there, then it is always possible to form such an agreement. The current agreement with FM goes for extinguishing systems and also EN54 detection. Now, a specific question that we often have from our stakeholders. Does the EN certification guarantee a high level of EMC immunity? Why is this so important? The EMC testing under the European norms is of very high standards, I would say highest standards worldwide. The EMC is one of the most challenging tests for fire product manufacturers. And most test houses experience a high level of failure in the initial testing. With today's technology, possible interference, we have the smartphones everywhere, we have Wi-Fi everywhere, and it will even increase with the smart building technology. You want to guarantee that your product performs in a correct way and not causes any nuisance or even risk to the occupiers or the fire service personnel. Absolutely. Onur, from a market perspective? Boy systems comply to the EN standards concerning EMC, but even we, we go beyond. We want to avoid any disruption to production and other operations caused by electromagnetic disturbance. That is why we offer a SMOG feature in our Avanar 4000 fire detectors. What does this mean? The Bosch fire detectors offer additional EMC protection beyond regular EN requirements and on top it measures the disturbance values. If they are too high, detector location can be improved. It greatly reduces the risk of false alarms and subsequent downtime and unnecessary evocations. Mm -hmm. And Florian, how do EN standards and, for example, VDS certifications fit to regional variations in regulatory requirements and market preferences, particularly in regions with diverse certification standards? In uh, many regions of the world, the dominated accepted standards are the European EN or the US UL, or a mix of both standards like in the Middle East or Latin America. In some regions of the world, such as China, India, Australia, they have their own standards. But if you look into these, there are a lot of similarities and some are really based on ISO standards with some variations, local variations. For example, if you take the control and indicating equipment ahead of everything, the AS72402 standard from Australia is in fact based on the ISO 72402, which itself is based on the EN 542. Having products tested against a specific standard is one thing, but to ensure it's fit for a specific site and application, 
you may want or you should consider other factors such as climatic conditions, risk assessments, etc. Thanks for clarifying that. And what strategies do you recommend for companies looking to promote the use of EN and VDS certified products in markets dominated by UL standards? Well, we strongly encourage companies to invite our experts to support, cooperate with those that specify the approval need on the very high value that is offered by the EN standards and especially the VDS quality mark. Okay. Onur? We believe exactly this is the way to go. Bosch is now putting a big effort to run communication activities to inform, but also to train main stakeholders in the mixed UL and EN markets. It is important they are aware of the many open possibilities for EN solutions. Specifically, we are collaborating with trade magazines, associations, running digital campaigns, webinars, and organizing face-to-face -face events together with consultants and system integrators. In Middle East, Asia Pacific, India and Latin America. For this, we work closely together with VDS to communicate about the high standards of VDS certification. Thank you, Onur. And from your perspective, how do you anticipate the adoption of EN solutions in the UL EN mixed markets? Well, today, most of the mixed regions are very much UL driven. The often projects are NFPA 72 specified, and as mentioned earlier, many automatically interpret that these projects are only open for UL solutions. Nevertheless, we see that once consultant, system integrator, and user learns more about the high quality and compliance of EN standards, and in our case about the benefit of Bosch solutions, they open up to EN solutions. This way we are increasing the successful installed projects and number of happy customers, which also calls for more projects. Very interesting. And speaking of Bosch benefits, which are the benefits that help to convert originally UL projects into EN? Just to highlight some convincing aspects, for example, for Middle East customers. Avenar all-in-one product, addressable aspiration systems, integration with third parties, soft addressing, built-in isolator in all devices, and number of devices in one loop. On top of the product features, we also use good delivery times, less commissioning time compared to your systems, competitive pricing and extra warranty to convince our customers in Middle East region. Sounds very attractive. And Florian, which would be the one key takeaway you would like people to keep from this exchange? Well, your optimal backup in case of emergency is ensured by the highest quality of EN and VDS approved products, we are taking these tough challenges off your back so you can concentrate on the core jobs that make you successful. Thank you very much. Onur, do you have some final words for our audience today? Sure. As we learn from VDS, EN solutions are perfect to fulfill the requirements of NFPA 72. So I believe our customers can be confident with our product portfolio, they can fulfill the requirements of NFPA 72 requirements. Thank you very much. Thank you, Florian, for being our expert guest today. Thank, Thank you, you, Onur, for Thank being you. here. And we're confident that this expert talk has clarified many questions regarding certifications in mixed markets. Should you have any questions remaining, please contact your local Bosch sales representative. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.